Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Energy News Beat Podcast. Today is the daily stand-up for August 21st. Hang on. We got us some stories today. China's coal production surges to meet energy demands. Fed confronts up to a million job losses vanishing in revision. Holy smokes, they cannot keep their numbers straight. Harris Walls are oblivious that the U.S. economy cannot exist without crude oil. Holy smokes, big oil cashes in as clean fuel startups falter. And Diary of a Madman, a natural gas producer. Now, this one is from an old friend of the show. This is kind of fun. So let's get started with China. You know, China's coal production surges to meet energy demands. And this brings up a very big point for the energy news beat. I've been saying for a very long time, the more we go renewable, the more fossil fuels we will use. And that has happened for the last four years. Now, China's coal production has reached a new high in July, surpassing the previous record set in 2023. Thermal power generation declined in July due to an increased hydropower, but overall power generation increased. China's coal output rose 2.8% in July from a year earlier as mines ramped up production to ensure steady supply amid record-breaking heat. There's another thing that we need to make sure we're watching, and that is the oil imports versus demand, and we are seeing that they are stock piling energy. What happens when countries stockpile energy? They're getting ready for tough times ahead and or going to war. So let's go to Fed confronts up to a million vanishing in revision. I want to go on record. I don't trust either the EIA or the BLS, Bureau of Labor Statistics, issues their preliminary benchmark employment revision. And Goldman Sachs says the job growth through the year was likely less robust than initially estimated, which risks fueling concerns that the Federal Reserve is following, falling farther behind the curve to lower their interest rates. When you have the different factions in our government, some are over here, like in the Department of Energy, falsifying numbers to make the gasoline and diesel numbers appear better so they appear to impact the market and it went time to come around and get the tally book out the numbers are going to go bad and they will eventually get corrected uh wednesday to show payroll through the year March was at least 600,000 weaker than currently estimated. This is really disgusting. Goldman Sachs indicates it could be as large as a million, but JP Morgan and Chase see that it could be around 360,000. So government agencies, we do not trust you. Please get your act together and everybody vote as if your life depends on it coming up. It does. Harrison Walsh are oblivious to the U.S. economy that cannot exist with crude oil. Hey, this is a, a, from a friend of the show, Ronald Stein. He is a great author, got his books all sitting right around here. And I'll tell you what, this is pretty crazy. When you sit back and take a look, I did ask X to create the cover photo for this and said it was created with X Groke. I created a picture looking at Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz walking down a street from a Google Street View with windmills and solar panels. Did a pretty good job, except they're kind of holding hands walking down the road skipping. So I didn't add that part in there. But let's go to the story. Neither uh, VP Kamala Harris nor Governor Tim Walz are cognizant of the parts of the spacecraft 
EVs for more than 50,000 merchant ships, more than 20,000 commercial aircraft, more than 50,000 military aircraft, 23,000 airplanes, and 33 million pleasure boats are made from the products of oil. Made from the products of oil. See, wind and solar only make electricity. Oil and natural gas have byproducts that funnel our economy. There is a significant difference. I'm all in on saving the planet, but let's do it by saving the planet with the least amount of impact on the environment. And that's not through 100% solar and, and wind. So we've got to produce the lowest kilowatt per hour with the least amount of impact on the environment. And they do not know what they're talking about on this. So it's an excellent article from Ronald Stein. Thank you very much. Let's head over to big oil cashes in as clean fuel startups falter. There's some big ones in here. The Inflation Reduction Act, the IRA was supposed to accelerate the transition from petroleum-based fuels to what the act termed cleaner transportation fuels. The IRA provided billions of dollars in tax credits and direct subsidies to encourage private industry to move forward with so-called cleaner catch-all term calling liquid hydrogen, biodiesel, ethanol, and renewable natural gas, RNG, new fuels to help the country meet its climate goals. Let me make this very clear. There is a difference between a biofuel and a renewable natural gas. A renewable natural gas, I'm all in. Let's take the methane that's building up in the landfills of this country and use that to turn that into electricity. Yay, that is renewable natural gas. But when you take a look at the Inflation Reduction Act and biofuels, why are we creating ethanol when ethanol takes more energy to create? It's worse on the engines and it is absolutely cause less, you get less miles per gallon on it. It increases the cost and it does not get you any good things at all. So let's take a look at the nomenclature, facts and physics matter in energy and fiscal responsibility matters even more. So when you take a look at the, the whole thing, this is an outstanding article. So jump in and take a look. This is from David Meltzer at oilprice.com. Let's jump to the last story here. Diary of a Mad Natural Gas Producer Man. This one was kind of funny. In the, without, in, when you sit back and take, Terry Edom is author of a great book. You've got to run out and the, his link to his book is in the show notes. He's a good friend. I've had an interview with him many times. For, and this is from the BOE report. But I did on X take a look at his title, the first paragraph. With all due respect to Ozzy Osbourne, a guy that lived the rock star life, who drank enough alcohol to float an aircraft carrier, who took enough drugs to stun a small nation, who survived all that, raised a family, survived to 76 and counting, and is worth $200 million. That's not a madman. That's a genius. Well played, sir. So I thought that was pretty funny. I took it one step further. And Terry, I went out to X and went to Groke and I said, create a picture on the floor of an oil derrick working and Ozzy Osbourne is the oil rig hand. And that's not a bad picture. Well done, Elon and Gronk. I, I thought that was a pretty good picture cover story. But as we dive into this one, you take a look at what industry would you consider producers accelerate production at such a rapid clip? while simultaneously driving prices into the toilet. You, that's what's happening with natural gas. Today, it's like $2.10. It's unbelievable. When you take a look at this, um, it is the cheapest form of energy that the U.S. can possibly produce right now with the least amount of impact on the environment. 
when you take a look at the technologies of fracking improvements over the first wave of growth, but don't completely explain the steepest part, when you take a look over the four year, the U.S. added 27 BCF per day, which is about 1.5 times Canada's entire output while the prices fell from about $3 to $2. That's the sort of annex the guy like Warren Buffett would like. But when we sit back and take a look, whatever, something will come of this out of the blue to send the gas, send the gas market into more spasms in a year. Gas prices will probably be 50 cents or $12 or maybe both in one day. Don't look behind the curtain. We're not well. And I love the way that he's phrasing this discussion is that there are things that are not making sense in our entire energy pricing matrices. I've been talking with folks about why in the world is it that the OPEC and OPEC plus cannot control their pricing models for Brent and taking a look at it. Well, you have 700 ballparkish in the dark fleet that are outside of sanctions how much of those 700 tankers are running around the world buying and selling oil that is outside of the OPEC and OPEC plus pricing matrices that's normal? Well, LNG, as I've been reporting on this, has stepped up and we now have a dark side of the fleet to LNG tankers. LNG tankers now are going through and... They are outside of sanctions. Russia, Michael and I talked about that on, on Monday's show. So with that, please like, subscribe, share, tell your friends, read this to your pets, make sure that you enjoy it. But also, if you are buying and selling oil and gas or buying and selling oil and gas assets, shoot us a note, send it to energy newsbeat forward slash energy newsbeat.co forward slash trading desk. And I will get you in touch with the right folks there. Look forward to visiting with you and have an absolutely wonderful day. Talk to you all soon.